Hey guys, Clyde here. Uh, before we get into the news, I just wanted to note a quick thing here. Today's top story is all about the separation of camouflages from their economic and combat bonuses. This is a huge change, the biggest change in World of Warship since the Captain rework about a year and a half ago, and it's gonna have big effects on the game. Today's video is a news announcement where we're gonna reveal all of the stuff that Wargaming has said about this. However, we're not gonna be able to do some of the detailed in-depth analysis that you guys have seen in my deep dive video series. You're gonna wanna stay tuned to the channel if that interests you. I've already started writing code to do some software simulations. I've already started creating spreadsheets and generating some ideas for how I want to talk about this as we go into the future. This, of course, being a news video, we don't have time for all of that in this video. So hit the subscribe button if you want to get into some more of the technical details as this becomes more uh, revealed to us and as we understand more about it. And uh, other than that, just sit back, relax, and please enjoy Clyde Plays News today. All right, guys, take it easy. Take care of each other, and we'll see you in the next battle. Bye. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Clyde Plays News. My name is Clyde, and our top story today is the economic bonuses being separated from the visual aspects of camouflages, and in some cases, I think some signals as well. Uh, but before we cover that, let's cover this story really, really quickly. Now, the trouble I have with this story is they wrote it in such a complicated way that it sounds one way, but it's actually a very different way. So the article here is about changes to the super ship's economy. And this is what it reads. It says, um, after the release of 011.3, initial statistics show that the rate at which super ships earn XP and credits does not correspond to what was originally planned. If you skim over the rest of that paragraph and you read the first bullet point, it says now super ship credit earnings will be on a similar level to tier 10 ships. That sounds like they're increasing the amount of credits you're going to get from super ships. However, the opposite is true. If you read the first paragraph carefully, this is what it says. The economy of super ships was designed around the assumption that they would mostly be facing tier 9 and tier 10 ships in battle. But the actual number of super ships has appeared on the server was enough to form full battles with a higher number of super ships than anticipated, which in turn led to an increase in their earnings. To address this, we've made some changes. So what they're saying is, is that they expected super ships to fight down tier. They're not calling them tier 11, but I think colloquially we can refer to them as tier 11 ships. They expected tier 11 super ships to fight 10s and 9s. When you fight ships that are lower tiers, you make less credits. What actually wound up happening is a bunch of us with a bunch of credits went and we bought super ships and then we were fighting other super ships. When you fight ships of the same tier, you make more credits than when you fight down tier. And so what they're going to do is adjust this to where super ships make even less money. Right, wrong, like it, don't like it. Super ships are here to take credits away from us and to not help us earn credits. That's not their purpose. Their purpose is to be a lot of fun, but not to be a lot of profitable, okay? Uh, Warco uh, says, this is a good thing. Well, it might be. Uh, and I think that's fair to think of it as a thing that will help regulate the number of super ships we expect to see in, in battles. I think the idea from Wargaming, and, and we'll see what happens with the community, is that super ships should be a, a rarer sight. They should be fun to play and hard to fight, right? Um, and uh, hopefully this helps with that, but let's take, take a look about what they're doing. What it says here is super ship credit earnings will be on a similar level to tier 10 ships as originally planned. I think what this means is they're bringing them down a little bit because they gave them a slightly higher number, but expected that they would fight down tier and thus they wouldn't see, excuse me, they wouldn't see quite so much even tier battle or super ship versus super ship battle. It says the amount of XP has been reduced. You get 17% more than tier 10 ships. It was formerly 27%. The amount of XP gained by super carriers for dealing damage was reduced. Uh, now it's similar to tier 10 carriers, which will eliminate excessive experience gains by this type of super ship. Now, experience is kind of a waste on a super ship. There's nothing you can spend it on to level up, right? You can't spend super ship experience on anything. The only thing you can do is give them money, give them doubloons to turn that experience into experience that you can use on other ships. So you don't really want experience points on super ships anyway. So in my opinion, I don't really care about that. Somebody else might be like, no, I use it, I convert it all the time. And to them, I say, that's expensive. 
more power to you, but I'm not going to convert my super ship XP. That's, it's just too darn expensive to do. The amount of XP and credits earned by super battleships has been increased. Now their income is similar to that of other super ships. So remember, they made battleships a little bit more expensive, and, and I'm inferring from this that previously super battleships also made fewer credits to also make them less common in battles. And they decided to just kind of balance them out, but then bring everybody else down just a little bit. And this is a patch they are pushing out in the next 24 hours from when they released this, which was yesterday. So this was such a big deal to them that they're like, oh my gosh, we've got to, we've got to change this right now. Now, luckily for them, these are all just configurable parameters that they can change on the back end and then send those super ships back out into the world without making a bunch of big changes. We've had a lot of conversation over here. TJ says, fun, fun. I'm not saying super ships are supposed to be fun to play against, but they are supposed to be fun for you to play and that the price you're paying for that is you're gonna spend a lot of credits. Now, whether or not we like super ships, again, I think that's a, a separate discussion. They are making waves. They are changing a lot of the way we perceive the tiers that have been in the game for about seven years. And so it's it's changing our perception of what it means to be a tier nine or a tier 10 ship, right? It's, it's a change. Um, in six months time, we'll know what we really think of super ships. But for now, uh, you know, it's just a big change. And of course, I don't like change. And I, I don't think a lot of people do. Uh, Warco says, super ships should cost enough to discourage the repeated play, in my opinion. They flooded the matchmaking, and that's not good, especially for tier nines. I agree. And I think that's what that's what uh, World of Warships is seeing. That's what Wargaming is seeing. Those are the changes that they're making. They're going, oh my gosh. You know, there's so many super ships out there that they're earning extra credits. Let's go ahead and adjust that so they don't earn so much. Um, and in turn, I think that's expected to reduce the number of super ships that we see in each battle. I honestly think that even if they had done nothing, you give it another two weeks and you'd see the, the usage of those ships come down. I don't see nearly as many super ships in battles this week as I did the day they came out. Um, and so I think we're seeing some of that already, but this is an, a further adjustment. We're going to go back to our main story now. Now, this is our main story, separating the economic bonuses from visual customizations. Wargaming, uh, the official streams, the dev blog, everything has been talking about this for a little while now, and now it's getting closer. Okay, I'm going to skip some of this front matter, but basically what they're uh, what they're doing is they're taking camouf right now in the game and for 7 years, camouflages have made a, been made up of two parts. They've been made up of uh, pixels and pictures and they've been made up of bonuses. And what they're going to do is they're going to separate the pixels away from the pictures or, or away from the the bonuses so that you can choose whatever visualization you want and whatever bonus you want. And while they're at it, they're going to adjust what bonuses are available and they're going to change a bunch of stuff about the math. Wargaming stance is that you're going to come out as good or better in the future. Um, and I think that's going to be true probably in a lot of cases based on my very cursory study of this. But I also think there are going to be cases where it's not true. And um, as the math nerds get their get their grubby little mitts on this news, we're going to find out. Okay, <clears throat> so seven years have passed since the game was released and the economy has remained largely unchanged. Uh, over time, we've come up with a long list of things we wanted to change, and this is one of them. So this is like an outline of what we're gonna cover in here. This says, what are the main goals? And it's important to look at things like this. When they talk about like Wargaming says, these are our main goals. These are the design goals they're trying to achieve. And it's important to read these and think about what they mean and understand them when we think about all of the rest of the data that they're giving us. It says, we wanna give you the ability to select economic bonuses and camouflages independently of one another. Okay, fine. We want to simplify the management of economic bonuses. This one was interesting to me. I thought that was odd. I thought it was really odd. Is it really hard to manage economic bonuses right now? Does anybody feel like that's too much? Probably new players do. Um, and so I'm I, reading between the lines here. I wonder if they're trying to make it simpler for uh, game adoption, right? Um, for those of us who've been playing the game for years and years and years, we're not confused by this. Uh, we get it. We know what's going on. And we kind of know how the math works on the back end. But a newer player wouldn't know about that. Bloody Joker says, I'm new, um, which is funny. Um, the next one is make the transition from the old one to the new one as comfortable as possible. This is like Google Translate Russian to English. I think what this means is don't screw it up as we go from the old system to the new one. Like make sure that everybody kind of understands what's happening and that it works and things are functional. That's my read on that at least. That's Clyde's opinion. And then it says keep the state of the game's economy 
uh, keep the current state of the game's economy with re regard to cost and earnings. Now, the fact that they call this fourth one out as one of their main goals, main goals of the update is don't mess with the economy. That's encouraging to me. I don't know if I think this is really what's going to happen. I think there'll be some adjustments. Some things will be better. Some things might be worse. Um, but I do think that it's interesting that this is one of their top four main goals is don't screw with the game's economy. Keep the current state of the game's economy with regard to costs and earnings. Okay. And then it says, besides that, we're improving the interface, bonus management, stock display, and more. This is a short list of the changes. If you're interested in more details about these, you can find them in the other sections below. So this bulleted list here is the, the list of key changes. And that's what I want to focus on next. I want to take a really good look at that. Let me take a look at chat, see what you guys are talking about here. Ice Cube says, having to choose how to stack bonuses seems more complex than current camos. Um, well, so I will say this, that the current bonuses are kind of complicated. So are you a premium player or not a premium player? Are you driving a premium ship or not a premium ship? Do you have a permanent camo on that ship or not? Which signals have you applied? Uh, do you have the military month contributor flag, which gives you an extra 5%? And then how does all of the math on all of that work out? Which number is it? Is it transitive? Is it commutative? Is it, you know, what kind of math is used to multiply all those numbers? Now, I think largely the way those work is they all multiply off your base XP number and so on. And that's how that goes. And so that's kind of an interesting, uh, it's kind of an interesting thing there. I think it's kind of complicated to figure out the bonuses now. And from what I can tell, I think this will be simpler. As long as it's still the same amount of profitability, I'm okay with it being simpler. But I still, I don't want to lose some of the profitability that we have. Uh, Warco says, I never like the bonuses attached to the camos, so I support that aspect at least. Yeah, I think from a design perspective, separating those two concerns is a good thing. I'm, I work in software as well, and I like the idea of the separation of concerns. That's a software design goal that you want. You want to be able to treat those things independently so that you can manipulate one without screwing with the other. Now, manipulating one, we don't really want them to manipulate with our uh, economy, but that's something that would be enabled by this. Yeah, GMAC is, is uh, peaking at the end of the article. We're going to talk about that as well. But he says they do handle the, the Missouri ec economic changes pretty well, by the way. Uh, Maxim, uh, Maximase44 says, Ahoy, Clyde and chat. Do you recommend to use all your special camos and flags before the changes? Thanks. Um, no, I don't think so. Uh, I, I don't think you need to go burn through everything right now. I actually think what's going to happen is they're going to take the things you have now and they're going to convert them pretty well to you. So I wouldn't necessarily go burn in all through that. Forrester says, can we get a YouTube uh, video about the game economy? Maybe. I've got some like partial economy videos up there right now. Uh, we've got, um, we've got uh, the video about the research bureau dives into the economy pretty heavily. Um, and so if you're interested in learning a little bit about the economy, you can check out the, the research bureau video. There it is right there. Uh, Forrester winks. Uh, that's true. We are going to probably wind up putting this on YouTube as well. So if you're watching this on YouTube, hello, say hi to YouTube, everybody. Um, this is happening of course, live on Twitch. So let's, let's take a look at this list of key changes here real quick. <laughs> Um, it says here, economic bonuses from camouflages and signals become separate entities. Choosing a camouflage only affects visuals. So what that means is you're going to be able to apply a bonus and you're going to be able to apply a camouflage. By the way, we're going to look at this picture here at the top, this guy, in excruciating detail here in just a moment. I want to go through this bulleted list first. So again, bullet one, we're going to separate the pictures from the bonuses. Got it. Thanks, boss. Bonus to XP does not affect free XP and commander XP. At the same time, however, all bonuses are increased accordingly. When I read this bullet first, I was alarmed. Bonus to XP does not affect free XP and commander XP. One of the best ways to get a lot of commander XP and free XP right now is to take and to use, uh, I think it's called the law of squares, where you take, if you have like a 200% bonus for base XP or for XP and a 200% bonus for commanders and you put those together that works really well if you take 200 times 200 it's a, it's about areas anyway it doesn't matter there's a bunch of math involved but the, the idea that we can use a buff to our XP to increase our free XP and our commander XP is a really critical thing that's why people can put all the signals and all the in a really good camo on and get like 30,000 commander XP right now because those numbers affect each other now what they're saying is this isn't going to happen anymore but they say that we're going to increase all of the bonuses accordingly. 
Now, if that's true, that's pretty cool. Um, my question, of course, will be, as the, as the economy continues, are those bonuses going to still be available? Right now, we can take a bunch of easy-to-get items, easy-to-get signals, easy-to-get camos, easy-to-get premium time, if you have a couple of dollars, and stack all those things together, and it gives us a huge bonus. In the future, are the huge bonuses going to be rare and hard to get? Or are they still going to be the same level of available as stacking bonuses is to us right now? And I simply don't know the answer to that. I'm trying to have a good outlook on it, so I'm not going to be you know, too much of an alarmist at this point. It says basic free XP earnings are doubled. In other words, the free XP that you get right now, you're going to double it. They're doubling it because other things are going to come down, right? So you're going to get more of that. I don't understand exactly the math behind why that's that case, but we'll spend some time on it eventually. Economic bonuses from permanent camouflages are purchased separately and are permanently active for a ship if present. Expendable bonuses can now be added on top of permanent ones. So I'm gonna talk a lot more about this when we look at the picture, but essentially what it's saying is you can buy a permanent camouflage, which looks cool, and you can buy a permanent bonus, which always buffs that ship. Right now we buy a permanent camouflage, which does both of those things. And you're gonna be able to buy just the permanent bonus or the permanent camouflage in the future is what this seems to be. Um, and so that's kind of nice. Maybe you don't like what the permanent camo for a given ship looks like. You could buy the permanent bonus and then put a cool expendable camo on there that you like better. That's a cool thing. Um, so I think that's kind of a neat thing. I like the idea of being able to separate those. I hope that costs come down accordingly. Maybe the permanent camouflage is 2,000 dubs and the permanent uh, uh, bonus is 3,000 dubs instead of the total of 5,000 dubs that we normally pay for like a tier 10 camo right now. In order to simplify the system, this part is a little interesting to understand as well. In order to simplify the system, only one economic bonus per resource, credits, free XP, uh, commander XP, or XP, can be used as, as a time, four bonuses in total. If you look at this picture, we have one for credits, one for XP, this one must be Commander XP, and this one is Free XP. We get a, you can put one card, if you will, in each one of those slots, but you can't put a bunch of cards up there. You can't put like 10 items that are all about regular XP. Instead of lowering the service cost, permanent camouflages give a credit bonus that makes it so the average income is either unchanged or increased. Let's talk about this a little bit. So right now, a permanent camouflage gives you, at, at tier 10, it gives you a 50% reduction in costs. The cool thing about a 50% reduction in cost is it's a fixed number of credits. You know exactly what you're gonna get when you use that permanent camouflage. The lame thing about it is it doesn't go up or, or down based on your performance. If you remember, they said they're gonna separate the, the visuals from the bonuses. So when you buy the bonus, that's gonna give you an increase in credits rather than a decrease in service costs. And a lot of this, if you think about what that's all about, what's going on here is that is designed to help you for ships that earn credits and not help you for ships that don't earn credits. I'm looking at you, super ships. So the bonuses are not going to help you if you have a, a, a boat like a super ship that just sucks at earning credits, but they are going to help you in boats that are good at earning credits. So premium ships, tier eight, nine, and, and even 10 are gonna be very, they're gonna, you're actually gonna earn more credits than you would have saved with the reduction in costs before. But you won't be able to use that same benefit on a super ship because they don't earn much and they have huge costs, if that makes sense. So again, I think of this as a positive change. Um, I think of it as a positive change. I think that's good for gamers, personally. Uh, to account for the changes, to bonuses, uh, let's see, to account for the changes to bonuses that lower service cost. In co-op battles, the surface cost will be reduced an additional 6.7% and credits will be increased to 12.5%. This to me tells me they did a bunch of math and they said, this is gonna screw over co-op players, let's fix that. And so I think they just zeroed it out. In order to make camouflages an exclusively visual customization, their combat bonuses are also separated from them. This one actually chaps me a little bit. Let's, let's continue to talk about this. The 3% detectability range by C bonus previously present on all camouflages is now just built into the default parameters of all ships. So if you roll into a battle and you're not wearing a camo in the future, you will not be any more detectable than a ship that doesn't wear a camo. 
it'll be exactly the same because basically everybody wears camo anyway. So this is really kind of a non effect. Um, everybody has some camo on and all camos have the same parameters here. Let's just give everybody the 3% detectability buff and we're, and we're just done with that. We don't have to worry about it anymore. In other words, there's nothing that's economic that's gonna be on the camos anymore. And this is nothing that is a combat bonus that's gonna be on the, ca on the camos anymore. The other one is the 4% increase in dispersion of shells fired by enemies attacking your ship will be entirely removed. In other words, everyone's ship will no longer suffer a 4% penalty to dispersion. Effectively, everybody's ship just got slightly more accurate. Like not a lot, but a little bit. This is gonna have a larger effect on ships that are more inaccurate. So I'm looking at like Palmer and Marlboro and these kinds of boats. These things are all gonna get more accurate. Now, your gun's getting more accurate means your enemy's guns are getting more accurate too. And that is not great. <laughs> That's not a thing that I'm really wild about personally. So they could have just made every ship in the game 4% less accurate, uh, but they didn't. They just decided to do away with it entirely rather than like what they did with their detectability, which is give it to everybody. So interesting to see. Um, I think, yeah, ships that have lots of guns and bad dispersion are gonna be a little bit better um, as we go into the future. Now we're gonna go take a look at the screenshot up here. Now I took some time today and I translated all of this from Russian into English so that we can understand it. Let's take a look at it. Uh, you guys won't be able to see where I'm clicking, um, but what it, this is all of the Russian words translated into English for us so that we can understand them. Um, what we're seeing here is underneath the green card on the far right of the four cards is a plus 600% free XP bonus. I'm gonna call these cards, I don't know what Wargaming's gonna call them. There's a little X at the top right, which is how you would remove that card if you didn't wanna use it. And you can see what they've done is they've clicked on the green card and there are four options. There's a 300% uh, bonus, a 600% bonus, a 2400% bonus, and a 7200% bonus. It's showing the price of the 300% bonus as 12 doubloons. So they're gonna sell us some of this stuff for doubloons, uh, which I, you know, I don't know if that's gonna be the final price or not, but that is what we're looking at there in terms of uh, doubloons. Hang on a moment, I'm gonna put me in here. Woo, look, now you guys can see me. Because this example player here um, has the next two sets. We don't know what their prices are gonna be. And then we can see that the 7,200% one is not available for purchase. It says not in stock right there. So the biggest bonuses like that are probably gonna be rewards that you're gonna get from missions and things like that. Um, 7,200 might sound ridiculous, but because of the way we could stack bonuses before, I don't know, you know, I haven't done the math, but I don't know that numbers up in the hundreds or thousands of percent were necessarily uncommon with our current builds. Somebody who's done more uh, World of Warships math here than me would probably be able to speak to that a little bit better. We can see the middle card there, the empty one, where it says set commander experience bonus. That's what that text at the bottom says. You can click on that card and you can select from your stores of bonuses which your commander experience bonus is. And it'll populate that with a little card, right? Just like the green card, the silver card, and the blue card that are there. We can see we've got a switch here for auto buy. This says auto buy is off in Russian. And if you flip that switch, it'll automatically replenish your bonuses, just like it does right now with signals or camouflages if you have the auto buy setting turned to on. Um, some of those purchases, as we've learned over here, are in doubloons, right? We're seeing that 12 doubloon purchase. So you're gonna wanna use that switch uh, carefully. Over here on the far left, this is the most interesting one, right below the Clyde Plays Action News logo. Um, it says, buy a set of permanent bonuses. This is the replacement for a permanent camouflage. When you click on that box, it's gonna offer to sell you a set of permanent bonuses for that ship uh, for, I'm a, obviously, a set uh, a number of doubloons. What isn't really clear here, and what is probably not necessarily planned for the initial rollout, is the possibility of selling you different multiple, and this is, by the way, speculation zone with Clyde. We're going into the speculation zone here is the possibility of being able to buy multiple different grades here. Maybe there's a, a level one, level two, or level three version of the permanent bonuses we can buy. I think at first we're not gonna see that, that's nonsense, let's not get ahead of ourselves. It's probably just going to be the same thing as the permanent camo sets. And anybody with who has a permanent camo, they're gonna give you one of these, I think, for free. Um, I guess we'll have to wait and see what's really gonna happen. Um, 
as we go. Warco says, I'll assume that permanent camo owners will have those already. Yeah, I think that's going to be the case. Um, we'll continue to look in the article. And then this big block of Russian text here says, install a set of economic bonuses to earn more credits, experience, commander XP, and free experience every fight. So basically, you'll be able to replace these five cards on here to populate up your ship. So if you've got premium time, that's always going to count for you. You can buy a permanent set of bonuses probably for tier appropriate ships. Remember, you can't buy premium camos for tier five and below ships. They start at tier six. I don't know if they'll sell us permanent bonuses for tier four or five or three ships, probably not. Um, and I think I don't want them to, so that would be for the best. Um, what's interesting is that you can't put on uh, you know, multiple of these cards. It's just one for each level. That does simplify this process quite a bit, um, which at least in some ways of thinking is probably not the worst. Okay, I'm gonna hide this and I'm gonna hit me, put me back in my little box there. Okay, I'm gonna cruise through the rest of this article pretty quickly because I think there's just an absolute metric ton of things to cover and not all of it is gonna be super interesting in the time for this news video. We've been doing this segment for a little bit already. Basically, these are the numbers of percentages. This table, I think, is really interesting. These are the percentages that are possible, right? Um, and we just saw that on in the picture up above, right? This says 160% credits. It means you can have a 20, 40, 160, or 320% credits thing. It says right here, that bottom row will be especially rare. That can be compared to using all the available signals and best camouflages in the current system. And such bonuses to credits and XP were previously impossible and would be very rare to obtain. So the thing that's kind of funny here is this is that would be compared to using all the signals and best camouflages in the game, which we can do right now and it's not rare and it's not hard to do. I have like tons of this stuff and I can just do it. I can just use it, it's fine, right? And I can build probably at least this level of bonuses in, in pretty common cases. I haven't done the math to prove it, um, so I think what's going to happen is they're going to move us. They're going to give us a bunch of stuff like this because that row and that row are probably what we have in stock right now. But because we can only use one of them, it's going to slow down our ability to use them. Anyway, there's a whole bunch of interesting math and stuff in here, a ton of it, which I need to spend some time looking at. And one thing they have is a, a, they've created a conversion calculator, which you can see in this section, uh, which you can access. And it's a Google spreadsheet. You go in there, you can make your own... Uh, you can make a copy of it yourself and then punch in all of the signals that you have and it's gonna tell you what you're gonna get out on the other end. I think it's kind of complicated. I think a lot of players won't bother, um, but for those who do, uh, that's pretty useful. The first bonus, uh, the, excuse me, the bonus for the first victory of the day will give 50% XP, 50% free XP, and 50% commander XP. Now, right now, it just gives us 50% to XP, but because of the way that our other bonuses work, that 50% to XP trickles down into those other categories as well because of the way it multiplies across. Um, so this is probably slight... I don't know if this is slightly better or not. Um, it's probably about the same, honestly, or maybe a little bit better. Um, combat signals are going to be controlled in the future from the equipment tab. I just thought that was interesting. And then it says, for ease of tracking bonuses, all owners of the Missouri combat mission will instead receive an improved permanent bonus for credits. So big changes are coming to permanent camos and to, to consumable camos and to all of the bonuses that come from these visualizations and customizations. There's some talk in there about some of the signals going away, the uh, non-combat performance signals. Um, and we'll learn more about that as things come out. Like I said, I'm gonna spend some time on this and learn more about it. Uh, and then we'll probably continue to talk about it. So that's all we've got for the news, guys. Uh, I think uh, with that, we're going to call it quits. Thanks for joining me on the news. If you guys are watching this later on YouTube, you're going to want to come hang out with us on Twitch. It's twitch.tv slash Clyde Plays Live. And of course, if you're here on Twitch, why don't you hang out with us on YouTube? It's a wonderful place. You can go to youtube.com slash C as in channel slash Clyde Plays and catch up with all of the stuff there. I will actually even just put in the YouTube link right there. Um, and with that, guys, uh, let's get back to a world of warships to play a few more battles. This has been the news on Clyde Plays Live. Oh, we'll play some boats, Div. <clears throat> We've been playing poorly, though.
Very poorly.